very good afternoon to you. It's Jim from Avstar Observatory. I want to talk, um, you know, off the cuff with you guys today about a few things. And, you know, I'm going to ask the question, you know, what are we going to do about these issues that we are facing? Some of them, I know a lot of you are going to feel that you're powerless to actually do something about them. But if, you know, if we think pessimistically right now, we've already set ourselves up later to fail miserably. And it's not the way forward. I want to just quickly thank a few people that have been helping support what we're doing here at the observatory. And I know for a lot of you, um, you know, you realise its importance. You know, this is your glimmer of light in an immense darkness that we're all living in right now. And that is a, a really good uh, and fitting description of the times that we're living in now. Um, so, you know, huge thanks to those of you that are helping, you know, you know, uh, push this cart and keep this going, this observatory. And, you know, hopefully uh, sooner uh, rather than later, we will have more magnetometers out there and we'll be collecting more data on this rare anomaly that we're all facing. But there are a lot of other issues that we're facing and some of them are not too far away. I'm not talking about, you know, eight months to the 40 degree mark. I'm talking about something else. I'm talking about what we're just a few months away from, uh, probably four or five months away now from the beginning of another winter starting this year and energy costs going up. We are being laughed at and it isn't nice that they're laughing at us. I'm talking about these rich elitists that are running, you know, the governments and think we don't know about it. You know, what I've noticed recently is that a lot of changing of hands of you know governments around the world sri lanka italy today has announced that it's gonna it, you know the east prime the prime their prime minister has resigned look what happened just over the last couple of weeks with boris johnson in the united kingdom you know there's a lot of changing events and i think really what it is is to do with the rising inflation now before we start talking about other issues you know the last video i talked about was what Rupert Murdoch's uh, Sky News, Kay Burley came out with, and how she stirred a, a storm up with those few words. And I'll just repeat what she said. Britain is burning. She says it in a real sombre way, you know, as though half the country had melted away over, you know, just a, a couple of hours of 40 degrees temperature. And it was far from the truth because it affected 40 odd houses out of 27 million and that is a gross exaggeration of the truth but the point is this is that there are a lot of people in this world that don't require uh, too much investigative information or, or more so that they will take Kay Burley's uh, word for it that half of the United Kingdom was actually in flames you know the truth of the matter is, right before us, with this chart, the Arctic sea ice extent is now for a second year running, or actually more than that, if you look where the red line is right now, it is running closer, more so now, to the 1972 to 1921 average. And what that means clearly is that there are millions more square kilometres of ice over the Arctic Circle right now than there has been at least as you can see on this chart since 2012 so for the last 10 years now we are seeing more ice over the Arctic Circle now what Kay Burley came out and said was that you know this is all down to now climate change caused by man we need to see what is happening in the United Kingdom and act and what they're trying to do, of course, is raise trillions of pounds for the coming meeting um, this year, COP27. It seems that now, more than ever, a couple of people in the media can make these assumptions and people will believe them. The evidence is right there in front of you. They never showed this because it wouldn't fall in line with them raising trillions of pounds. You know, these people don't work for a living. They've never had a corn or a blister on the palms of their hands. 
and every bit of their wealth is on the sweat that you have had to push out it's the sweat off your back that has allowed them to live the emperor's lifestyles that they've got you know we're going to see a lot of tears in people's eyes this coming winter when they can't afford to switch on their heating and as we've already uh, accepted here in the United Kingdom before it was a matter of heat or eat now they can neither do either of those this coming winter everything has gone up inflation's gone up globally and it will put more pressure on more people than it ever has done and we are going to start to feel the effects of that not only that we are facing a time of great changes with our climate but it's not for the reasons that these elitists are telling us you know I've showed you the CO2 that we emit into our atmosphere and it's nothing in comparison to what naturally gets emitted into the atmosphere from the oceans and the land I've showed you also that we are returning back into a glacial period and naturally CO2 will fall we monitor the CO2 levels in the atmosphere here at the observatory so that we can report honestly what is going on in that respect but let's put it into perspective 440 parts per million is nothing in your living rooms right now with just one or two people being in a small confined space the CO2 level is probably over a thousand parts per million and you're not feeling nausea or dizzy but you know we live in that environment in our own homes you step onto a train on you know in the morning when everyone's commuting to work and those CO2 levels will go up to around about 2,000 to maybe 3,000 the equipment I use if I took that on the train and switched it on whilst it was busy with everyone traveling to work in the morning the alarm would go off on the CO2 meter because it would be close to 3,000 parts per million so you know they are blaming something which is only a trace in the atmosphere and before their very own eyes they are looking incredibly stupid but they are still for some reason and I don't know how they're able to do this is convince people that they need to change their ways of life industries need to change and clean up their acts because this 0.4% of the CO2 which is emitted not just by men on this earth but also by the land and oceans which is the majority of the gas uh, creation is a trace gas in our atmosphere and we've seen them try and pick on other types of gases like nitrogen what the big deal is with CO2 is they said it's a greenhouse gas and here's something even more ridiculous another greenhouse gas is water vapor yet if we measured the amount of water vapor in our atmosphere it would make the trace gas CO2 laughable it really would and it's a greenhouse gas as well because it's also made uh, with three molecules just like your CO2 is made with three molecules it's bad you know our biodiversity on our planet needs this you know through the little increase over the last 30 years NASA have taken photographs of deserts returning back to green which means that there is ha an increase in habitat for other species to thrive in I ask you that question is it a bad thing is an increase in making our world a little bit more greener a bad thing CO2 as you already know is a plant food without it it would die all the vegetation on our planet would die in fact if we dropped CO2 levels even if we were able to do that and we're not if we were able to drop CO2 levels down to around 200 parts per million we would kill off the vegetation on our planet and in turn ourselves along with it I really don't know what's happened to human beings anymore and you know the corruptive behavior of these elitists 
that are running the puppet governments that we see before us, their behaviour is getting worse. And their thirst for greed is getting worse. And every single time we end up paying for it ourselves, me and you. And it doesn't matter anymore where you're from, what race you are, what nationality you are, or what your beliefs in. It is us that is picking up the tab for the bill every single time now. And I want to ask the question, what is the solution to our short-term problems with regards to what these greedy elitists are doing? What is the short-term solution to fixing some of these issues? Because we now are all starting to feel the impacts of their greed. We've seen them use, you know, the crisis in Ukraine to put up energy and fuel costs unnecessarily because the barrels of oil never went up in price. It was the greedy forecourts that put the price up. I nearly fell out my car window the other day when I went past the garage and saw the cost of fuel. And to be fair, okay, I was taking a shortcut through an emergency exit onto the motorway, so I cut through and there was the fuel station selling diesel at two pounds, 9.9 pence a litre. Incredible. Unnecessary. Because if the fuel costs that much, the logistics costs even more means it's even more expensive for the farmer to get round his field in his combine harvester which means the end product by the time it comes to the shop everybody has had to increase that a little bit to cover the costs you know it means that you know our wages are going that little bit less further than what they did originally and something needs to be done about this you know we can't just keep sitting by and allowing this to happen. We had a government here in the UK, and it's not just isolated to the UK, we had governments here in the United Kingdom promise they wouldn't put the taxes up, and they did. You know, Boris Johnson's resigned now, but he should be put in jail because he made promises to the people in the form of a manifesto, which he hasn't kept. Now I say put him in jail, because if we don't, Ten years down the road, we're going to find out that now he's one of the richest men in the world because he has cut deals whilst he's been in power. And I believe he wasn't forced out. I believe he created this situation for himself because what he's doing now is running off with all the stuff, all the loot which he's made whilst he's been in that position. You know, the globe right now, uh, or the global military industrial complex is waxing its fingertips rich on the blood of those people that are dying in the Ukraine right now. We know that because we saw Christine Lagarde go straight into Ukraine setting up loans for them so that they could purchase the weapons because I don't believe they're being given these weapons. I think they're having to pay for them and they're paying with the future sweat of the Ukrainian people in the, when this war is, you know, decided the outcome of it. You know, that country has put itself in debt so it can fight this war. It's sad because it's not the elitists, it's not the people that own the industrial complexes of the world that lose their lives in these conflicts. They never do. I would not be surprised if... You know, we found out that the West was not only supplying the arms for Ukraine, but I wouldn't be surprised if we found out we was actually also supplying arms to Russia as well. Because that's what greedy people do. They don't care. You know, if they can keep encouraging this war to, to continue further, you know, they're not bothered about the loss of lives. Because it's like that movie, isn't it? Lord of Wars. You know, every bullet that comes out of the gun is the sound of the till. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. And they're making millions and billions out of this war. And I've seen something really sad today on social media because 
Yeah, I rarely do switch on the news these days, and Kay Burley was fortunate to get my attention when she came out with that statement, but I saw something really sad. I saw a father holding his 13-year-old son's dead hand because he'd sent his son out, and whilst he was standing at the bus stop, a shell landed on the ground and killed him. I saw the same with a woman who couldn't let go of her husband's hand he was dead on the floor with a blanket over him. Another life lost. We live sometimes, I think, in hell. Maybe when we go to heaven after this life on this earth, we'll be told that it wasn't it wasn't an earth like we thought it was. It was actual hell. Because I don't really think human beings like human beings. And we are the worst species on this planet because we don't just dislike other human beings we dislike everything where is this hatred coming from in human beings from to act like they do you know everything at this point in time is being taken for granted no one gives a damn about the sun rising and the seasons that change. No one gives a damn. They're too busy thinking about their own little situations, their own little bubbles. You know, they don't care about the deforestation of this world. I'm not a tree hugger, but I'm saying, you know, we've lost species that we never even discovered. And they're gone, they're extinct. And that's down to mankind. But the reason why we're taking the wood out of the forests is because it's profitable for us to do it. And you know, we don't really care about ourselves, so we're not going to care about other species on this planet. I want to ask, you know, you guys, there'll be four or five thousand people maybe that watch this video today. I want to ask you to think about some of the things I've talked about in this video and try to come up with a solution to this problem that we all face globally. Because we're coming close to times now, as I explained four years ago, five years ago, I described it as the gauntlet. I said once we keep uh, dodging these things, you know, there is more obstacles coming up on this obstacle course in this gauntlet. We're going to hit one and it will be, you know, that that makes us collide into another and makes us collide into another situation. And we are seeing this before our very eyes with, you know, the pandemic. OK, I don't care either way about what people think about that. It hit us hard in the pocket, all of us. And now this war in Ukraine and now this inflation rising, you know, what's going on in China right now. 80,000 people have decided to get together and not pay the mortgages because Evergreen has gone bankrupt that was building houses for them. You know, people can work together, even in communist countries. But this situation is not looking good for us and we need solutions to these problems. The last thing we need is pessimistic approaches to situations that need to be addressed because we're very resilient creatures but right now the only plans I see are, and the, the advice that is being given even by some of these smart people on social media is make sure you've got a book out back and you've got some food storage but that will not be a solution it will only be a short term fix because I don't think you guys out there realise you know, what human beings are capable of doing when they haven't got something that they need. I'd like to know what your thoughts are. You know, the link down there is in the description if you want to help support our observatory. And the only other thing to say is, you know, guys, you take care of your loved ones. Or so what I usually do. Bye for now.